When you initialize an instrument, an empty MIDI object is initialized with it. You can either start editing the object by defining a buffer size and inserting events, or by inserting a whole MIDI file. In today's video tutorial, I'll show you how to create a performance view that lets you load a MIDI file with the file selector. And never miss a tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ADSRtoots. You can only use one MIDI object at a time within an instrument, and that MIDI object is held in memory and can be accessed by any of the script slots. It's possible to add, remove, and edit MIDI events within the object as well as import and export MIDI files. So far we've looked at how you can import files using the load MIDI and the insert MIDI commands. While functional, these commands aren't very practical in the real world because you'll need to access MIDI files on the fly. So today we'll look at a new command that allows you to load files from a directory and navigate back and forth between them. We'll use a new UI control, UI file selector. UI file selector has the following commands and built-in variables. Get file name. This returns the file name of the last selected file in the UI file browser. It returns, you pass in the, the ID number of the UI control and it returns 0, 1, or 2. 0 is just a file name without the extension. 1 is a file name with the extension. And 2 returns the entire path. The next command is navigate. This allows you to jump to the next or previous file in a, U, in a UI, UI file selector and trigger its callback. You pass in the ID of the UI control and then the direction, um, 0 and 1. So 0 is a previous file, um, and this is in relation to the currently selected one. And 1 is the next file, and that's also in relation to the currently selected one. The built-in variables available are base path, so this sets the base path of the UI file browser, and this control can only be used in the INIT callback, in the init. You also want to be careful with this, um, because if you have a large number of subfolders in a base path, it can take a long time to scan the entire um, child um, directories. And you have to remember that this scan happens every time you load the instrument. So you want to make sure that you point the base path to a folder that has the smallest amount of um, of subfolders. Uh, the next built-in variable available to us is the width. This sets the width of the browser columns and this can only be set in the init. Then you have your file path which is the actual path of the UI file browser which has to be a subpath of the base path. And so um, a, a use of this parameter is to recall the last status of the browser when you load the instrument. Um, so when an instrument loads, it can be set to the last, um, the last directory that was used. And once again, this can only be used in the init callback. And then the final parameter available to us, or the built-in variable, is the file type. This lets us set the file type for the file selector. And this can only be used in the init callback and you have the following file types available MIDI, audio, and arrays. Alright, so let's get started with our code. So you know the drill. We're gonna start with our init. We need a perfu for this today. We're gonna set a UI height of 5 the script title little mini file selector gonna clear any messages it's actually a message I always do this all right there we go actually I'm gonna shorten this to file selector there we go. All right, we need to declare a couple uh, variables. So we need to set the base path. And I'm going to set it to a folder on my desktop. I'm 
I'm going to also declare a variable to hold the file name, another to hold the actual file path. Next, I'm going to declare the actual file selector. I'm going to give it a name of file browser. Next, I need an ID for it. So I'm going to create a variable browser ID. sign on that okay so now I'm going to set the browser ID equal to the ID of file browser I'm going to use get UI ID for this Next, I'm going to set the, a few parameters for it. So first, I'm going to set the base path of the file browser. So I'm going to use set control parameter. And this one is a string. And I'm going to pass in browser ID. And the, the parameter I want to adjust, which is base path. And I'm going to pass in base path. Next I'm going to set another control. This one is going to be the file type. I'm going to set it to MIDI. So this one is a regular parameter. I'm going to pass in browser ID and it is control parameter file type. And the built-in variable is ni file type MIDI. Next, I'm going to set the width. So set control. So let's type in this again. I'm going to just paste it. So this is control parameter column width. I'm going to set it to 180. The next thing that I'm going to set is the height. So this is control parameter height. I'm going to set that to 170. And the last one that I'm going to set is the width. Oops, typo. I'm going to set this to 550. All right, then I'm going to move the control to the left side of the view. So I'm going to use move control by pixels and I'm going to pass in the name of the control which is file browser and we're going to put it on 66.2 all right let's make sure we don't have any typos and set control parameter browser id control oops dollar sign All right, there you go. So as you can see, we have our file selector here. All right, so let's continue.
All right, so now I need uh, some buttons. So I'm going to declare a UI button previous another UI button next. Going to move the control to the right side of the view. I'm going to use it grid so 5 1. Then move the other one to 6 1. I also need a variable to hold the status of me loading the MIDI file. So I'm going to just call it um, load MFID. I'm going to set it to negative one. So this basically states that no file is loaded. All right, that should do the trick for our init. Declare UI button. All right, so we have our buttons. Let's take a look at it. We have our buttons previous and next. Okay, let's plug all this stuff in. Let's do the plumbing for this. Get some space so you guys can see. All right, so the first thing that we want to pick up is on async complete. So this is called when the MIDI file is loaded. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to check to see what this is because async complete is called for a lot of different things. So we want to verify that we're checking for the right thing. So we want to see if this is for a MIDI file load. So we check if the ID matches. And if it does, we set the ID this basically re resets the ID um, back to negative one once it's loaded and then we check the status using async exit status so if it's zero that means um, it couldn't find the file. Else, so loaded MIDI file, and we pass in our variable that contains the file name. That is it for async complete. Let's make sure there's no typos. If, else, and if. What am I missing? Oh, parentheses, there we go. All right, so we have on async complete. The next thing that we need to handle is we need to handle the file browser. Um, because the file browser is actually, let me show you, you can actually click on it to actually load the MIDI files. So we want to plug in that, and we also want to plug in using the navigation buttons to go between these two. Get this back in view for you. All right, so we have on async complete. So let's handle the browser first. So we have a callback for the file browser, file selector. And what I'm going to do here is when you select a file, I need to set the file name. And I do that by calling um, get file name. I'm going to pass in the uh, Uh, the browser ID and I want to return the file name without the extension so I'm going to use zero I'm also going to set the path uh, 
this time I'm going to use two because I want to get the whole path. And that is it for the file browser. So now when I come up here and double click on this, this is actually loading it. Okay. Or it's not loading it, but it's actually getting the, the, um, oh, I actually forgot one thing. It's actually not doing anything yet. <laughs> so right now, it only contains the actual names, but it, since I didn't call the uh, load, it's not actually doing anything. So I need one more command. I need to set the ID of the MIDI file and call load MIDI file. I don't know how I forgot that. File. So I pass, I pass in the entire path of the file. Okay, there we go. Now if I double click on this, it will actually load it. And if you look here, loaded MIDI file. Loaded MIDI file. Okay, so now this is functional. Now we need to plug in the buttons. Previous and next. Okay, so on UI control previous. Uh, we want to do basically the same thing um, that we just did, but we also want to call um, navigate. So by calling navigate, what this does is um, it tells us, it tells the browser to navigate to previous or the next. So zero is previous. So I also want to get the file name since I just navigated to a different file. If I didn't plug this information in, all it would do would, would just be changed on the UI. It would just change which one is selected. For it to actually load, I actually have to you know do a little, um, I have to basically do the same, these same steps here. So I actually can just copy this. So when I click previous, not only will it jump to the previous file in the UI browser and the file selector, it will actually also load this as well. I also need to set reset uh, previous um, to zero. All right, so for next, this is going to be exactly the same thing, except we're going to just use the next variable and we're going to use um, one because um, we want to use next. Um, all of this is the same. This is the same. And then this is going to be next. All right, no errors. Let's exit this so you can see. And I really should change the color of this. Keep that there so you can see that. So this works. As you can see, I'm still loading the MIDI files. And then previous works. Next works. Previous, next, next. So the buttons work. And manual selection works. The MIDI handling in Contact 5 is simply put amazing, and it further cements Contact as the most powerful sampler on the market. Um, we looked at various ways to load, save, and export this MIDI, but to what end? Playing the MIDI in your instrument, of course. I mean, we have a few more lessons, but rest assured, I'll, I'll show you how to get that MIDI playing. And don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more Contact tutorials and sounds. ADSR contact tutorials, supercharger contact skills. This is DJ Nice signing off until next time. I go make some music.